Hey everyone, it is Danny Drew here. Hope you are doing amazing. Now I've got something really special for you. I decided I'm going to be doing the ranked, you know, the gameplays and, and the playthroughs and show you those, but I also want to do some content related to coaching, right? That was originally how a lot of people found me through Delight's channel. And there's no one better that I can think about for the first episode of the student coach series than my buddy Clay. So I want to introduce everyone. This is Clay. Say hi, Clay. Hey guys, what's going on? And for Clay, he's he's really new to the game. He's probably got about 15 games under his belt, if that. Am I mistaken there? Have you been grinding in the, the shadows? Um, according to this, I have 22, but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, I've played through about 16 of them. I'm not going to lie. I suck so bad in some of them. I might have uh, might have clicked the X button after I figured out that I was getting wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, after a couple lessons together, man, we, we can help you uh, level up, which I think will be a lot of fun. So really the purpose of this is I'm going to be kind of hand-holding with Clay and, and working with him on specific sticking points. And for him, he's a relatively new player. So there's a lot of things that hopefully you're going to be able to capture in his play and, and some of the things, that, some of the insights that we're going to pull from that to help your game and, and to level you up as well. Clay, I think what we'll do is you have one more ranked game left. So I would like for you to click on that and we'll work on it together for this one. And we'll go from there. And that was All quick. Right. That was very quick. Yeah, perfect. All right. So I'm going to try to give you as much free reign. I want you to share your thoughts and then we can kind of collaborate as the game goes on. So you are in the second position. Yep. Tell me, what do you think about this board? Okay. Um, I mean, when I look at something like this, mm -hmm. uh, as a person of just learning, I see the eight or being interesting. Uh, so the uh, four, eight, ten, mm -hmm. um, and then pointing, you know, towards the port. Um, you know, also the 483 is nice. It's kind of the same principle. Like ultimately I'm seeing that port and that eight and kind of seeing that being uh, pretty efficient. Um, and then now that I'm saying that, I also see the 843 on the opposite side as well um, with the wheat port. You know, both kind of give the same exact idea to me, honestly. Um, and never mind on that one. So we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> We're gonna go uh, uh, with my my second choice over there, um, which is the four three eight, um, and then pointing uh, left. Okay, that's not a bad pick. Uh, usually, when you are picking, and especially this is really good for newer players, you want to look for two main things. The first one is going to be high production, always. So you want to look at the highest producing spots that are available to you, and then the second one is flexibility. For instance, the eight five ten in the bottom left, it's all sheep. It's a lot of it's one of the highest producing spots, if not the highest producing on this board, but you're getting three spots of sheep. So right, unless yeah. you're planning on going to the, the sheep port, it actually might not be that great. So we want to find a really good balance of finding production and finding flexibility. Are there any spots that seem really high production and flexible other than the eight four three? Um yeah, the um oops, sorry, I dropped that. Um the Nine three six mm -hmm. um, looks pretty good. Um, the uh, six five eleven is kind of juicy as well. Um, nice, juicy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever word that equates to me winning this game, you know. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think just from what I'm seeing here, I mean, I obviously I can be wrong, but. I think that the 483 would be the most viable. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can kind of go from there on the second pick. Um, and maybe it just something that's like a it's like a safety net thing. I always feel like for my first one, I always have to be like next to a port. It's something it just seems so valuable. It's kind of hard for me not to. I got eight seconds go, though. So take it. Take it. Yeah. I'm going to try my best not to tell you the moves because there's not as much value if I yeah, just say do this, exactly. do this, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. But 
um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make the moves and trust. And I do actually like the A43. It's three unique resources. It is high-ish production. Not the highest, but it is high production. And yeah, I think there's a lot of options. Especially if you look at this board, there's really the thing that's in the highest demand is the ore, right? We have the nine, the nine, the eight. There's a lot of ore on this board. So to pick up the, the wheat, the sheep, and a little bit of wood, there's a lot of ways that you can pair that really nicely on your second settle. I think for me, I <laughs> a lot of people know I'm a really big fan of the 963. So I, I probably would take that and just have the challenge of potentially going sheep port. Yeah. But that would probably be more of an advanced setup because the thing is, if you take the 963, you might not get wheat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, another thing that I feel um, is that wheat is so um, you know versatile in this game. Yep. Um, so I always feel like that's like probably the biggest part. I mean, obviously, you know, ore is, is good for like the big city plays, but, um, we need it for dev cards too, but, um, I don't know. I see, I see the wheat as the biggest priority for most times I play this game. Yeah. Well, I've always said the wheat's in everything, right? It's in the development cards. It's in the cities. It's in the settles. So wheat is considered the most valuable in demand resource. Yeah. Now you're living your best life if you get the 963, which I think Red probably should take that. It makes a lot of sense. They got the brick port. Oh, interesting. Now you have some options here, Clay. Um, what 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 do you think makes sense? What do you like here? Well, I mean, it's not ideal, um, but the 926 in the bottom. Yep. Uh is looking good as an alternate option um, since he kind of I, – I don't really agree with his play, honestly. I feel like it's, uh, it's not the most efficient thing, but, you know, I guess we'll see when the, the dice rolls, you know, but um, – For what it's worth, I know Macy and it's a she, but yeah. Oh, yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, you know, it's 2023. I got to be careful. Um Okay, but uh, yeah, so the nine two six is good. The um, I definitely want to get some ore if possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could be, I could, you know, I don't know. And actually, never mind. I was gonna say I could be terrible and maybe get a coast spot with that eight, but I feel like that's not really uh, that's that's a little risky. It's it's not the most uh, you know value out of a beginning play. Yeah. Um, also, the the you know the eleven ten nine doesn't seem too bad either. Um, I don't know. I think I think the nine six two overall. Pick it. So pick I'm it. I'm gonna go but with that. Yeah. Trust your gut here. It's not a bad pick. You you are playing with. Well, yeah, we got to figure out the road, right? Well, I'll go right, and maybe I can catch this uh, port here. Um, well, I mean. I am going for the wheat port as well. Um, you know, I would say this. I guess it depends on orange. You know, if he tries to, I will know, say go, you're 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 better pointing right here. Yeah, because the the reality is you don't have much wheat. Yeah. So more than likely, when you get wheat, you're going to be using it with the cards that are in your hand. But That's you do true. have the eight sheep, and there are, there's a lot of sheep on this board, so there's potentially trades for the sheep, so you can use your port. There's also potential mono. So if you pull that really valuable mono card and there's, you know, a ton of sheep on the board, you're going to be really primed with that port. So these yeah. are little strategic things that we're thinking about when we're we're picking ports. It's not just like do I produce it? It's what's the overall potential throughout the game. Now, if blue is 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 really thinking about this, I mean it's a no-brainer to me. 6311 down all day. So that is the disadvantage of your pick, is that you've opened up the board, right? So if... Oh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, maybe he's going for his uh, a, a road. Maybe he's going for the 5, 11, 4. Mm -hmm. um, and then road to his other settle. Okay, so what do you need and who has what? Because you're clearly missing a resource and there's somebody that has a lot of it. 
Um, I need wood. Okay. Um, you know, okay. I didn't, this is another thing. I did not pay. So six, attention. six brick, put on the six brick here. Yeah. I didn't pay attention so, to what his second settle was. So blue um, just placed on the six, three, 11, right? So they have two wood and a brick and then whatever just rolled. So you have a, you have a 50% chance to grab the wood and you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so it's very good in the early stages to track, right? So, you know, as soon as you hit that seven, you know where to put it. And it's also good to be somewhat diplomatic. You could solo block somebody in the early stages, but the problem is, is you ruin the risk of, or you run the risk, excuse me, of potentially upsetting somebody. So blocking yeah. two people at once is a really good play. And the six is nice because then you dominate the brick, right? Yeah. Cause now who <laughs> has brick on this board, but you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, okay. You didn't get what you want. Not a problem. Are there any potential trades? Do you, do you think? Um, I mean, I can try to trade an ore for this uh, wood. Um, but, I mean, I think in this moment, I don't really see the urgency for it. Okay, then then pass. Yeah. <laughs> Macy. So you got to think, too, who, who has nice block? There you go. <laughs> um. Blue has no sheep, right? Yeah. So I think you might be getting smacked here. Some some retaliation for losing the brick and also taking the ore. So either they're going to either block the eight, the nine, or the, the five. So they got a lot of options here. Depends how they feel. And there's that kind of principle, right? Like stop the wheat, which usually stops a lot of early plays. I would be focused on, are there ways that I can sell my sheep to blue before orange sells his sheep? Ooh. Okay, well, I think my biggest priority right now is, um, you know, maybe settling. I mean, I'd like to get... No, never mind. Um, well, you, so here's the thing, you have to make your hand actionable. Which means you either need wood to drop roads, or, or if you get an ore, you drop a city. That's which, what I'm thinking. Maybe go for a city right now. So um, you don't have to try it here. Or you can also try to grab a brick, but there's no other brick on the board. And sometimes, too, when you're trying to move quickly, I would do two cards. There you go. Now, usually in this situation, you want to make sure that you're... Take it. There you go. All right. Where do you want a city, Clay? Um, I would love the city on this 926. I feel like... Go for it. That, Knock it that out. That would be uh, ideal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, I John Massey. so there's a case for both. Uh, I think actually I would do the eight four three because think of ratios, right? You produce a lot of ore, you produce a lot of, sh and of course, you know, as soon as I say this, you produce a lot of ore, you produce a lot of sheep, but you don't really have a lot of wheat. So by putting the city on the four wheat, what happens is you increase your overall wheat ratios, which balances your game much better. Plus you have a ton of brick and you have only a little bit of wood. So the eight four three is just a really nice balancing act for you. You get blocked. That's okay. So in hindsight, I think the eight four three is a better city, for for the reasons of hand balancing. But good job for a city on the board, man. Yeah, um, I would like to get a. My next priority, I'm thinking, is getting a dev card so I can you know, have a little bit of defense to this issue. Um, because I mean, I if if I were these guys and I were to see someone who have a city, I would automatically like, you know, be attracted to blocking that. Especially you know because you have red on it too. It just feels like it's a natural block. There All we right. Go. Um, competitive advantage. What would be a good block that would slow down the board and give you some kind of edge? Uh, the six for sure. Um, you know the. Yeah, I'm going to go with the six. Hurry up. Whew. 
All right, now to steal from, I'm going to steal from. Now look at Blue's last trade, by the way. <laughs> what do you think's in Blue's hands? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to take it. And of course, and of course you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's we're all right. We're trying, we're trying. Um, I mean, what do I need? Yeah, I can't really do anything right now. I'm just going to pass. It's okay. It's okay. And it's nice that you have the wheat. Now, the advantage of the 9.62, though, is that <laughs> the, now the 4 is rolling like nuts. The advantage of the 9.62 is the second city probably comes a little bit faster because the ore is doubled. Exactly for this reason. If you start to get a couple 9s popping, all of a sudden the next city is sitting in your hand. Yeah. And then your game is just going to absolutely take off. Funny enough, you have... That's really good for blue. So now blue's going to become a lot more efficient. They don't have sheep, but they at least do have an efficiency play. So you can, well, you can attempt to sell the brick, which might have actually some value to red. Like a lot of times doing like a, a weed and a brick actually could be very valuable here. Look at that. We don't, we don't even have to do it. They can just do it for us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well then, uh, drop it like it's hot. Yeah. Now you, in, in Catan, we have something called pacing, which is how do you move with the ebb and flow of the board? You are pacing like a maniac right now, but in a sense, like what else can we do? We have, we're just getting the roles. We're getting the trades. So it is what it is. Nicely yeah. done. Eight and a three. And then we have a road settle. Um, and keep in mind, your brick is valuable here. So if you're ever going to trade it, which I'm not opposed to, but you need to make sure that you're getting equity for it, which means probably a two to one trade. Yeah. Let's see if you roll another seven. Oh my goodness. Jesus. All right. Okay. So who's the threat? Who do you, who has what you want? Um, I mean, everyone's a threat, but, um, yeah, I'm not counting cards. That's the thing. I mean, I'm probably going to block this 10. 10's a good block. Nice. The bot chose for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Um, where to choose? Oh, I guess it's, that's fine. Uh, let's go with her because she questioned me in the beginning. She gave me the question mark, and I get the rub. All right. Um, I mean... Shouldn't I be able to... Well, you have a road. Yeah. And it's better that you use it before it gets stolen kind of thing. So... Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Um, the... Well, I mean, honestly, uh, I want to snag this guy right here. It'd be juicy because then I can get, you know, the two to one with, you know... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Go for it. Go for it if, if that's what you want to do. And then I'll end my turn. But you're about to get robbed. Just letting you know. And, That's okay. And, and it's very road. likely you're going to get double robbed because, or you're just going to get solo. But that's okay because we've already got the brick. Nice block. As far as I know, we haven't gone to three yet. Say goodbye to your other brick, brick here, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> Sayonara. All right, so it's good to do some kind of accounting here. Red has a settle. Blue has a settle. Orange hasn't done anything yet, but they do have two development cards, which is a very interesting development. Yeah. Nice block. Ugh. It's kind of okay it. because you've already got two cities. So, you know, we're in kind of settle mode. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> it was a good try. It was a good try. That's a great role for uh, Orange there, who has the coordination. So coordination means you, you're essentially a number that provides multiple cards. Yeah. So coordinated fives. And what a lot of players like to do is they like to coordinate compatible resources. So they'll coordinate ore and wheat, right? Because you can get them together to build cities, development cards, and they'll coordinate roads, brick and wood. And right, yeah. Four ore mists right there. Have the pain sink in. Yep. 
I don't mind. I, I think there's a lot of value for you going for the wheat point. I think there's a good chance you get it. But I do think Orange is somewhat incentivized to take it as well, just because they do have a decent amount of wheat. But they're asking for ore, so it kind of makes me think that they're focusing on potentially a city. Which, by the way, Orange at two points shouldn't be... Um, over overlooked here because they have a very strong OWS setup, right? They have tons of, I mean, that's all they're playing here is they have a ton of sheep, a ton of wheat and a decent amount of war with that nine, which is rolling all oh, clay. Sorry. Come on, man. Come on. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's all right. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. <laughs> this is, it's getting worse. <laughs> all right. I mean, all right, we're back in it. We're, we're back. Sorry. I'm not just, I'm on trackpad. So, you know, my sausage fingers kind of uh, slip it around. All right, so um, I really can't really do anything right now. Yeah, that's fine. I have to tell you, this four has just been absolutely bonkers. Okay, so if red needs wheat and they're tracking, then they'll know that. Well, I get a guaranteed wheat, and they'll probably take from you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And as far as I believe this is also a city because the nine has rolled a few times here. But the problem the problem in this situation, or maybe they're going for the settle. We're probably going to see, because now the robber's on orange, we're probably going to see a knight from orange, which means it's probably going to go back on the nine or, and you're probably going to get robbed again. Yeah. Is that you clicking? Oh, you can hear that? Yeah. Um, that is uh, my girlfriend taking a shower. <laughs> it's the, uh, there's a, what is it called? A uh, drainage. Uh, Got it. Don't, don't, don't yeah. worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. So we're kind of waiting for a couple key roles to come in. One of them being the three. That's really great. Has an eight rolled all game. No, it hasn't. The four. It's been a four roll game. So we need an eight and we need a six. Those are good, good high number rolls. So we should expect something. Um, and you I could also like attempt I, a trade here. Yeah, I was gonna say I need to try to get rid of some cards here. I mean, maybe they won't trade with me, but I can at least give it a shot. Well, there's not a lot of brick, but there is a lot of wood, and wood is generally valuable for you. What I really want to do is try to get a. Uh... Maybe for a sheep. I think the only person that has that would be orange. Just pass here. I mean, the the thing is, no matter what, you're gonna any roll puts you over because you're gonna get two cards from every roll. Yeah. Oh, this nine block is murdering you right now. And you could see the power of Orbeat Sheep, where if you have if you're getting early development cards, you can really put pressure on a particular tile. You should expect for most of this game that. That nine is probably going to be blocked as long as Orange is playing development cards or buying development cards. But luckily for you, you've already got your cities, right? Yeah. Okay. There goes the five. Now, here's the thing. Three development cards, it, it could be likely they have multiple... Ooh, unblocking. Very nice for you. Thank you. I'll take that. I think that's a little bit premature unless they're really looking for a specific card. And there's no pressure for them to do that. He got another dev card for that. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's their game. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when you have knights, it's better to, unless you're looking for a specific card, kind of like what Red did to you when they played the nine and hit you, um, it's better to kind of not be too aggressive in that way. Okay. All right. So, so ask, ask Orange in the chat. No steal for no steal. And then put it on the, the nine, the nine or. And the idea is here is we're going to try to make a deal. We have to hit the nine, but let's see if we can get a deal here. So, hold on. 
And the whole premise here is we're trying to make a deal so that we know Orange is going to play a knight, but why don't we get it to where... All right, just steal from Orange here. That's fine. Man. It's fine. Your hand's busted. No worries. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking for some diversity here. If we can get an eight, that'd be nice. Yep. We're just waiting for our rolls. There we go. Also, let's keep in mind this 10, 11, 9 is still open. Now, we should expect more than likely what's going to happen here is he's going to play 9, hit the 9 again. And hopefully, looking at Red's situation, he hits Red here. Should be the 9. Doesn't really hurt us. Yeah. We can lose a wheat here. The brick. Okay, so you can't plow him. That's okay. Wow. So we're going to try to sell that brick as well. Because you got to think, orange is only playing or we cheap, right? Yes. We're trying to make sure that red doesn't keep getting trades. Red is doing well here. Um, I'm not really need either. It doesn't hurt. Or you can... S yes, just... You can say any two. A lot of times I do that. I, I just... I'm looking for value, right? So I already have a bunch of wheat in my hand. I don't need three wheat. But if I can get two unique cards, um, I'm pretty happy with that. So we do have the potential if an eight rolls. Okay, so try brick for sheep here. And this would actually be targeted towards Mr. Jorge. So this would be going for orange because orange doesn't produce road materials, right? But they have a lot of sheep. So we're really trying to um, do, a, do a brick in a brick in a wheat here. Brick in a wheat. The idea is we could potentially, with this trade, go to 9, 10, 11 here. Perfect. So I think you have road, road, settle, right? To 9, 10, 11. I think you should take it. Do you see what I'm saying in the middle of the board? Yeah, yeah. So here, here. One, two. Yep. I think Blue is about to... Uh... He's about to be very upset. <laughs> yeah. This actually does a few things, and of course now the eight rolls. Um, this doubles our wood production. Ask for uh, potentially like a wheat in a, a wood, right? We're gonna get two cards here. Gotta stick to my guns. You gotta be very careful. Eight cards, two down development cards. This could be your plenty. So you actually might get plowed here. No. Oof, that would have been another city. Or at least a development card. So you Damn. see you see what's going on with this block, right? It's it's brutal. And we'll we'll see the stats at the end of the game how how much ore those pesky knights have have cost you. I the thing is, yes, you could buy a development card if you get an ore clay, but the problem is then you give up the wheat and the you give up the wheat and the sheep in your hand. So it's better to hold it here and let's try to get some settles. All right. That's fine. You've already got two cities, so it's not priority that we get ore here. I just feel like my uh well, I mean honestly, I'll take that for the time being. This is good. Good. All right, now the nine is a massive because it's going to put either a city or two development cards in your hand. That could be very strong. Yeah. And we're assuming he has an he doesn't have another knight. That's dangerous. Dangerous. Oof.
Yeah, orange is orange is very scary here. Oh, you're you're, you're just on the butt end of everything here. Yep. All, All right, right. So see if we can sell this this wheat. Right there, there's a little bit of ore on the table. I think the wheat might have some value potentially with blue. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to stay actionable here and buy a development card. And if that's perfectly fine if we don't get it, because we can always wait for the nine. Better better to hold it at this point, Clay. Okay. Oof. Tough, tough break there. Probably I would expect the ten wheat to be hit. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god. Brutal. That's okay. This is okay. Also, let's keep in mind road has not been taken. So you've got to be saying that for sure. Uh wow. I don't think that's the right hit at all. <laughs> all right, type in nine ore. Nine ore. So we're gonna what what are you doing? I couldn't do that? Oh I was saying slash girls because you said she was a girl. Um <laughs> I have to edit this. <laughs> Just put... All right, there we go. Finally, come on. Leave it there, please. All right, come on. Give me a nine, baby. This is good. This is good. Okay. Yeah. Now we need the six so we can settle for, for a damn change. Okay, so not, let's just hold here. We're going to stay patient. It's risky, man. It's risky, but, I mean, we're going to have to take the risk. Now, red doesn't have any knights. That's scary because red might have two VPs. Tell him block, brick. Brick. No. Okay, perfect. So we have the settle. And what and what's you know you know what's nice about this? We have the wheat port too with the settle. Yeah. That's massive. So the the issue with the nine is that red already has the other nine. So it, it's marginal in terms of what it does against red versus blocking the brick does stop the potential for red taking road. That's fine. That's fine. So let's ditch. Let's ditch the brick. The sheep. No, 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 no. Keep the settle. So you need to keep the at least one brick in your hand. Put a brick in your hand. Gotcha. And then the wheat. All the wheat down. Wheat, wheat, wheat. Go, go. There you go. Now let's put it on the six. And the the six brick. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. Because we want to slow down the potential for someone to steal road, and it's definitely, definitely on uh, red here. Because red has two down development cards, which means they could have two VPs. Take your settle, sir. Boom. Okay. Nothing we can do. We have to pass. There we go. Ooh. Another city. As long as I don't get robbed for the eighth time. Okay. I'm getting a little scared here. So, city for seven, correct? Yeah. Very nice. If we get another nine, we can also pull development card. And I'm getting a little concerned that there's a mono out there. Usually when players take their time like this, like, I'm not winning, Red has... Oh, don't like those pulls. Oh, no. So, Red actually might have the win in hand. This is a tough spot for us here. We need sixes to just go crazy. Not a, oh, okay. Okay, so the question is, we have three development cards or a city? I mean, a city would be, I feel like, a nice first, and then I can prioritize that later, I guess. Well, here's the thing. We might, we might be in a position where red just might win, but at least if we pull some development cards, there could be an opportunities for victory points, road builders, monos. I actually think pulling three uh, one at a time, take your time, okay? You've already committed, so you might as well start pulling another. 
Yop's interesting. And pull one more here. Victory point. So perfect. So now we're two roads from longest road. Correct? And a um, settle. Yeah. So what we have to hope here is that red doesn't drop a road and settle and win the game. Like, so for instance, if red has two VPs. Yeah. And they drop a road, they go to nine points. So do you kind of see why the the three development cards is worth it? Yeah, of course, yeah. Because not, I mean, not only do you get the point that the city would give you, but then you get the utility of things like the Years of Plenty and the, the Road Builders, if you pull those. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll see what's going on with Red here. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, so, so type, type in chat here. Blue take road. No trade. No trade. We can't risk Red winning here. All right. So, the wood is being ported. That's very good for us. Say sorry, sorry because of red. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to paint the board. The thread is red here because road is nine points. Yeah. To say you are closer for sure. Eh, interesting. All right, so we, we're going to have to put orange on eight points here. It's it's getting to the wire, Clay. It's getting to the wire. Yeah. Say good. <laughs> orange doesn't win, but orange is getting close. Oh, so you see what he did there? He poured it for a brick. Why would he pour it for a brick? Orange is trying to win with a road builder. Take the brick out of Orange's hand. Take brick out of Orange's hand. Yep. So Orange has a... Yep. You just say Orange has road builder. Don't got it, man. Sorry. So if we get a 6-3. Ooh. Um, do th All right, so do this. Do three sheep or a sheep for a wood. They didn't want it. Let me think here. I mean, I can use drop this at some point. I mean, do you have to use the? So, the so, so bit? I think I think you can hold here. So the year plenty allows you to pull two cards, but two of the same or one of each. Any, yeah. Okay. So you can pull two brick. You can pull a brick and a wood, but it doesn't really help here. Say no. Just pass. Just pass. So you're definitely getting hit here. Perfect. So a six is actually winning. Yeah. Um, and do you see why? Um, well, I mean that I can build a uh, road, um, which would get me up to, well, it's only nine points. Um, but then I guess I have the, uh, this to do a settle mm -hmm. and that'd be game. So let's see what happens. We'll, we'll be very lucky if a six rolls.
I mean, this is actually kind of close. I mean, it's close for everybody but blue. Okay. Well, that, that hurts a little bit, but not that much. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. So now we would need three roads, but no worries. Shoo. Oh, we would have, you know, we would have had the win there, Clay. So yeah. we would have had the win. Um. So well, drop, I guess I'm drop, wrapping around, right? Drop the road. Yep. Then another so, one. So 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 now hold on. So let's use the year plenty for a wheat. Yep. And a brick. Yep. So we settle. And let's just let's just hold here. Yeah, I don't, I don't want them to so, be... So, so you could drop the road, but the problem with the road drop is that it's just a little bit too obvious. Like, yeah, exactly. I, then, then you know, Blue's going to try to take it. Um, yeah, so we, we just have to hope that Blue doesn't connect here. Oh. Now, Red still has chances. Like, Red is two roads and a settle away. They don't have it with their current hand... But if blue doesn't connect this turn, then we're kind of we're in a, a weird spot. As of now, we have multiple winning rolls. The four's winning, the three's winning. I mean, I can use my knight to steal brick or uh, steal um, anything I need. Yeah. Um, Practically everything is winning for you. That's winning. But we're going yeah. to assume that blue will connect here. <laughs> That's. You might even have it. Let me see here. So we have four roads in hand. You're currently at. So you're a card off right now. So there's a good chance you might be able to steal for the win here. So there's a lot of rolls that get you the win here. So let's roll. Oh. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No worries. No worries. So drop and um, take the two wood and a sheep. Get rid of one more sheep. Get rid of one more sheep and a brick. Nope. Dang it. Oh, Clay. Sorry, dude. This trackpad, this trackpad, man. Okay. So put it on the. Now there's a really interesting block, which is the five. Uh, the bottom here? The five wheat. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. And it has to be red. Yeah, for sure. So I don't think we're going to get road anymore, but what you could do is you could drop a road to the four on the four. See the four over there? The four wheat? Uh, over here? Yes. It's another settle spot, so it's a it's a nice way for you to potentially get a quick point here. Yeah. Man, you almost had it. Nice block, sir. Sweet. Ching. So you have another settle in your hand. Say, say I, I have knight. Damn it. That's okay. So here's the problem. Orange is not playing knight, so we have to assume orange is on nine points or like eight points with a mono. So they're they're definitely the biggest threat. So play your knight. Play your knight here. And you want to keep the wheat blocked. Orange doesn't have wheat in their hand, but they do have the sheep. So you're going to get a sheep here. So you see the reason why we steal from orange? Yeah, right. All right, boom. We're going to roll. Okay. So you have sheep port. What's what's a play you can do here, Clay? Uh, two for one. That for the a wheat mm -hmm. settle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna start with that first. Boom. 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 Nice nine points, sir. All right, and it really sucks that seven killed you earlier yeah i hate to see it um all right i guess i'm kind of stuck at this point yeah um okay four is winning yep 
Uh, the 10 is not winning for orange, but they can buy a development card, which is the problem. Yeah. Because their hand currently is two ore and a sheep. So a 10 is a really big opportunity for them. Ooh, that's a great block. So now what they're going to do is they're going to take three sheep, turn it into a weed and buy development card. Uh, there, oh, there's the road builder. That's right. I, I'm a dumb dumb. Remember, we called the road builder from earlier. Four's winning. Yeah. Eight's winning. Two's winning. Okay. Not cool. Not cool, guys. You're so close. You know, maybe a two. Maybe a two, man. I mean, a two would be so clutch. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> So I, I, I'm being, all right, good luck, sir. No, no dice. Uh, Live to fight another um, day, I suppose. Eights, uh, blue's actually doing very well here. Um, they might have a winning opportunity if they get the right rolls. Um, the four is such a brutal block. So you just have to pass here. Pray yeah. for it, pray for a seven. Damn. Now, if red has a mono, they actually might take the wood here and might be winning. Can can red take road? It's five roads. It's unlikely. So I think what they're doing is they're counting here. They're looking, if I'm going to mono, how much, I gonna, how much am I going to get? You buy another card. Interesting. Um, so an eight, eight is actually winning too here for us. This is this is good. This is good because now the yeah, four is open. It. Yeah, I prefer it. Okay, now we're getting close, man. Oh, there it is, right there, boy. All right, come on, Just come on. Survive, oh survive, sir. Come on, baby. All right. <laughs> Drum roll. On oh, the two. <laughs> GG. Don't pass your turn. Do <laughs> take the win, man. I'm getting scared. You're going to skip. Oh. Wow. Great game. Awesome. So, okay, a little bit of hand-holding there, but hopefully you, you kind of see um, kind of yeah, the flow yeah. of some of the things there. The biggest thing is just keeping up with other people. You mm -hmm. know, just, uh, you know, I feel like as a beginner, I'm just so enveloped in my own game that it's, you know, it's hard to be, you know, let's, let's just go with like, you know, knowing what's in their hand or, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, just the little things like that. Uh, here, can I click the continue and it'll uh, go to the... Uh, yeah, yeah. so okay. if, if you don't mind for the audience, it would be cool to go through the stats real quick. And let's see yeah. how many cards Clay lost because the nine was getting slammed. That was insane. So those are the dice rolls. Uh, yeah. Resource stats here. So those are kind of just what was the output of different resources, dev card stats. Those were the devs pulled. So there was still a Monopoly in play. So I, I think Red had the Monopoly. Yeah. Yep. Activity stats. Uh, so this is interesting. So the uh, the th the middle column on the right, so the 16, is how many resources you had blocked. So you had 16 cards blocked. Oh, God, it's brutal. So that was a mixture of, I think, almost everything. Uh, mo mostly ore. Yeah, and that, that's sure. That's a huge amount of blocks. So you can see the power of having night control in those kind of games. And then you were robbed twelve times. So, if let's let's look at it this way, you factor in the robs. That's twelve cards, and then the sixteen cards blocked. So you You're lost twenty eight cards between blocks and robs, and you won that game. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, man. That's the way it crumbles. So let's go back to the board, Clay. Uh, let's kind of just talk about it for the the audience at home. Look at your eight four three. Uh, I th like I said, I think I would have gone six nine three, and you've kind of got the six nine three almost. You got the six nine two, but it's a great setup. 
uh, it is very balanced in the sense that you do have all five resources and we saw the four overperformed, which was amazing for you. I guess what was your biggest takeaway from the movement of this board and like some of the ways we played it? I think just some, a simple thing. Um, you, you said the pacing idea. I feel like I came out the gate in the beginning mm-hmm. um, and I came out strong with the, the first city. Um, and I think I even got the second city pretty quickly after that. And I think that just kind of made me a target. That's why, you know, you see the, the way it was. I mean, there's other factors, but for the first, you know, few rounds like that, that really crushed me. Um, well, just because you were crushing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like, granted, I think I needed to do what I needed to do, but I, just something to be aware is like, you know, you don't want to be, you know, getting ahead of the pack because then it's a turns into a 3v1 and uh, definitely not pleasant. Um, the, you know, like I said, I'm so enveloped in my own game that it's, it, I, I mean, obviously I see what's going on with the other players, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard to visualize like what their mindset is a lot of the time. Um, you know, really for me, you know, when I'm playing a game like mm-hmm. this, um, it's like, let's say I have to block, right. You know, I, I initially just go for the basic, like, okay, who has, you know, like simple things like who has the most cards, right. Obviously that doesn't yeah. equate to them having the most value on the board or anything, but, um, you know, when, when the clock's ticking and you got to think really fast and you yeah, don't yeah. count the cards, it's just, I don't know, man, it's it a little overwhelming. Uh, I think I That's just fair. honestly, I need, I need to know um, just the, the little nuances a little bit better um, mm-hmm. so I can just keep up with the pace. But as far as with the other players and their development, um, obviously Blue, they in the very beginning had that potential for the road and always it was kind of... Um, you know, worried about that, um, which obviously ended up working in their favor in the long run. Well, until I actually won, but you know what I mean? And like, as far as like, you know, competition goes. Yeah. I think one of the best things you're going to learn as you get better and better at the game is your ability to adapt because a lot of people will go in with the plan and then they'll just only tunnel vision on that plan. Like we had a plan to take road and we miss that opportunity because blue more or less secured it. So that's where like, well, screw it. We'll just we'll get our final two points by building there versus yeah. a lot of people. What they do is they would get stuck on building roads and they would get into a road battle with blue and then someone else would win. So I think as you get better, just, and you learn kind of the temperature of the board and the room, so to speak, you'll kind of learn how to ebb and flow a little bit better and not just be so stuck on one particular game plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, if I were to be playing this game, at least at that moment mm-hmm. with, with the road aspect, I would have definitely, tried to prioritize that because I just would have seen the two points for the win because I think I was at eight points at the time. I might be wrong on that. I I just felt like it was a very feasible thing for me to do and then Blue, you know, took it. Which was the right play for them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I don't blame them, but, you know, I guess I'm saying I I would have tried my best. Like, I if if it was was me, I would have prioritized my cards to wrap around, you know, down – six maybe past two and five if i needed to 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 compete with that road but obviously that i would have been racing just one person while the other pe- two people were just you know getting ahead of both of us right so well, I, uh, I think for your first lesson you know obviously there was a lot of decisions you had to make and there was a little bit of driving i had to do as well but you, you kind of got behind the wheel or of a car that was moving pretty quickly and i think you you kind of handled that very well so Nice, nicely done, Clay. I think you earned your your diploma now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we can uh, show that. Um, the whole. Well, I don't know if it's actually showing on your screen or not. It is. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, perfect. You know, I can I can hold the diploma. Oh, there it goes away. <laughs> um, nice man. Well, I so, I really I really appreciate you kind of test driving this with me, and you know I'm excited to to see how you keep progressing and. Maybe we can run this back as you keep practicing getting better. Let's let's sign off. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, let me know if there's any questions you have. And I'm excited. I think uh, this will be valuable to a lot of players that are trying to improve. So, Yeah, I'm glad my, my noobness can maybe uh, give some insight of what other noobs are feeling. So thanks, man. <laughs> no worries, buddy. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Hopefully this was helpful. Give us some feedback. You know, was this lesson 
insightful to you? What are some things that maybe we can adjust and change as we're getting into this format and experimenting with the coach student model? I'd love to know. Anyways, Clay, thanks again, everyone. It's Danny Drew, and we are signing off. Thank you. Take care.